All right, to wrap up for six, we've got a couple of proofs involving um, you know, isosceles triangle here. Um, so um, given that AB is congruent to AC, so we've got AB is congruent to AC, an isosceles triangle, and AD bisects BAC, so AD bisects it, we're going to be able to say that those angles are congruent pretty quick. Prove that angle B is congruent to angle C. All right, and so this is going to be our proof. Let me go ahead and pause and set this up. All right, and by the way, we're not doing the flow proof. We're doing the two-column proof as usual. All right, so uh, we've got our givens. And so then from our bisector, we can say angle BAD B -A -D is congruent to angle CAD from the definition of bisector. All right, then from there, uh, we've got those angles. We, we can get this side over here, AD. So segment AD is congruent to itself from the reflexive property. And then uh, we've got side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So side, angle, side. we got the triangles are congruent. So I'll say triangle ADB is congruent to triangle ADC. Um, and so then we can finally say that B and C are congruent. Angle B is congruent to angle C. And that is from CPCTC. All right, so what theorem did we just prove? We actually just proved the isosceles triangle theorem, that if the sides are congruent, that the opposite angles are congruent. So the isosceles, isosceles triangle theorem. Abbreviate that. Um, so now complete the rest of proof above using two steps. Basically, we would go from the given straight to the answer, uh, but we would do, and I'm just going to kind of uh, shorthand this, but we would use the isosceles um, triangle theorem. Much easier, right? Saves us a bunch of steps. All right, uh, so writing, writing a proof here, complete the following proof. We know BC is congruent to DC, so BC is congruent to DC. And then we want to, and we have BF is congruent to DE. So BF is congruent to DE. Uh, and so they want us to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. Um, and so that's all we have so far. Um, so let me set up our proof. All right, so we got that side is congruent to that side, that side is congruent to that side. So we actually have one giant isosceles triangle, so we can actually say angle B is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle D, and we can do that shortcut of the isosceles triangle theorem. So isosceles triangle, do that theorem. And once we have that, we've got a side, an angle, and a side. So from side, angle, side, we can prove that triangle, doesn't matter what we call it here, we'll call it C, F, B, C, F, B, C, E, D. It's congruent to triangle, so triangle, C, E, D. And then from there, once I know this triangle is congruent to that triangle, these are corresponding parts. So angle one is congruent to angle two, and that's because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent.